afternoon. My name is Crystal Brenner and I'm going to be showing you the Avia ventilator. Basically what I'm going to walk you through is all of these knobs on the side or soft keys is what they're called and what happens whenever you touch them, what do they do, that kind of thing. So just an introduction, basic introduction to the Avia ventilator. First thing I want to point out to you is that we do have a touch screen that you can touch and turn and accept. Most all of these are touch screen as well, and you just turn the knob. Anytime you change anything on this Avia ventilator, you have to touch, you use this turn knob to change it, and then you either retouch where you have applied the change, or you press this accept button down here. So as we go through, if I change anything, I'll show you, I'll talk you through, touch, turn, then accept. First thing I want to point out to you is that we have a main button here. Anytime you want to get back to this main screen, you always push this main. The main gives you your three scalar graphics plus whatever you've set up here on the side so that you kind of know what's going on with your patient. When, anytime you're standing in front of a ventilator, you just want to know, how do I know what mode I'm in? How do I know where the settings are? An introduction to this screen is your mode is always up here in the top left corner. This top right corner always gives you the status of your alarms. Green means good. These buttons here are actually very changeable. If you touched it and you want to see something else there, like let's go to spontaneous tidal volume, you can touch it, you can turn it, and then you can change it to whatever you want to see on there. So all of this interface here is very user friendly. It has the ability for you to touch and turn and change whatever you would like to see here. Most places will set it up to what their ventilator check needs to read uh, when they do their ventilator checks. So the main screen is a great screen for you to know. You always touch that soft key and you get right back to this, pa this page here. This next button here is called the screens button. There's lots of different things you can do with this button. Um, and today's video is not really all about what all this does, but if you wanted to change over to, let's say, your loops, you have your three scalar graphics here, if you wanted to go to loops, have to, that is where you'd go to your loops. And then your screen changes to where you can see all of your loops for your patient. This next button here is a freeze button. If anything on your ventilator, let me go back to my main screen first. If you want to freeze the point in time on your ventilator, all you have to do is push freeze. At that point, everything on the screen freezes. The ventilator is still breathing for the patient, but We've stopped everything on this screen. So then you could use your knob to show a cursor. If you wanted to find out what was the peak inspiratory pressure for this first breath, you could use your knob to get to that area and you'd find out what the peak pressure was, what the flow was at that time, and then what the tidal volume was. So it's a great um, button to be able to use. You can also go into your loops and you can freeze your loops as well. So there's lots of different ways to use the freeze button and you can set up things to where you, the way you like it. This event button here is if at a certain point you ever wanted to hook up this ventilator to a computer, you could actually uh, download data to a computer and, and kind of have all of your information there. And let's say you had a high, uh, any type of alarm, or if you wanted to kind of note that the patient had a blood gas or a chest x-ray, then you would use the event button and you would accept your uh, event, and whenever you pull up trends, it'll be on those trends. This mode button is how you would change modes. Now there is another way to change modes on this ventilator. Instead of pushing the mode, you could actually just use the touch screen up here, it brings you to the same screen. For this purpose today, I'm going to use the soft key as our mode. If you wanted to change modes, there's a lot of different modes on the Avia ventilator. Definitely another in-service uh, video, but these are the modes that are available on this ventilator. This next button down here is called advanced settings. Take that out of the mode screen. The advanced settings, if you look kind of down on any one of these areas, there's a little yellow triangle. And that yellow triangle means that there is an advanced setting for that uh, setting. So if you have the advanced setting light on and you see this blue box with advanced settings on it, 
then when you hit that button, it'll tell you what the advanced settings are. For this one, it is the V-Sync and have the ability for the patient to kind of be a little bit more synchronous with the patient or with the ventilator. The peak flow has your demand flow off and on. It also can change your square to a decelerating waveform, so two, wave, two flow waveforms on this ventilator, and so on and so forth. You can go back through all the advanced settings, once again, something for a different video. The setup button takes you back to the initial setup before you ever turn or put a patient on a ventilator. You always want to make sure that you select your size. The VIA ventilator goes for all three sizes, neonatal, pediatric, and adult. Um, and once you get into the size, then you would be able to run their um, extended self-test, which helps you to know that that ventilator is working properly. Uh, you also have the ability for automatic airway compensation and some other things that you would want to find out on a more extensive video. Okay, so we finally made it down this side of the screen. Once again, these knobs over here are, you are able to touch and turn them if you'd like. Everything down here are all your settings for your patient. So anytime you're ever wondering, well, what, what is my tidal volume? What is my flow? You can always look down here at the bottom, and these are, you have the ability to touch and turn and change any of the ventilator settings. If you had the ventilator hooked up to a computer, you have the ability to print the information, either the screen information or your trend information. You do have the ability to lock your panel if you know that there's um, going to be a possibility of somebody trying to uh, touch the ventilator or change something and you don't want them to be able to do that, you can lock the screen. Obviously though it does say panel lock, has a big bright light on it, but nobody would be able to come up and change anything. This button here has a nebulizer, this ventilator has a nebulizer that's internal, it's inside this machine and if you push that button then the nebulizer turns on. So you'd want to put your medicine in the cup and have the um, oxygen flow meter hooked up to this nipple and then you would want to uh, push that button. It runs for 20 minutes, if you needed to nebulize for more time you need to re-hit the button. Anytime we're trying to ventilate a patient on a volume control mode, or some sort of volume mode, we would want to be able to have an inspiratory hold so that we could get a plateau pressure. So the inspiratory hold does have to be timed with the patient breath. So breathe in, hold, release. Okay. Now auto you should have this set up to where you can see your plateau pressure. Go ahead and set it up so you can see it for this next time. Um, and then you'd want to wait to read your peak pressure on the very next breath. So, so let me, that plateau stood there for, or is there from the last time, but I don't know exactly what my peak pressure is, so I'm going to do it again. Hold the breath, release. Plateau is there. Peak pressure was 33, so then I would be able to record 33 for the peak pressure. 31 for the plateau. That's how that works. Of course, if we always are standing in front of a ventilator and we see that our flow does not return to baseline, we'd want to do that expiratory hold so that we could see if the patient is air trapping. And if you hold that, it would be able to give you your auto peak. Let me set this up over here where you can see auto peak. my ventilator is reading that I had an auto peep of six after I did that expiratory hold. The accept and cancel button are your very best friends. That either tells the ventilator, yes, I want to change that, or you can cancel anything that you're doing. So you always want to know where those buttons are. We finally made it across here to this area here. I'm going to start up here at the top. If an alarm went off on the ventilator, then you would see the alarm status up here. You'd see actually um, indicators. I'm going to set the alarm off for a second. Okay, then the alarm indicator shown, and then we also have a list of alarms that went off during that time that it was alarming. So if you came in and the alarm had reset itself, 
then you would see which ones went off. The alarm reset button, those alarms are there. You just want to reset the alarms. The alarm limits. This is an area where you can set all of your alarms that you want to have set for your safety of your patient. There are a lot of different alarms on here. Definitely another in-service as well. If I wanted to give my patient a manual breath, I could utilize this ventilator and this button here to give a manual breath. As long as they're not already taking a breath or they, uh, it is a time for another breath. You can give it as many times as you want. These last two buttons here, if you just wanted to increase your oxygen for the two minutes, then you just hit this button. If you want to actually do that for suctioning purposes, and you hit this suction button, it not only silences your high pressure alarm, but it also increases the oxygen for two minutes. The last knob that I really have told you about but didn't really explain, this is the turn knob, so anytime you're touching and turning, you uh, then want to use this turn knob to accept. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you for your time. Have a great day.